as you can probably see, this table is starting to get a little bit cluttered. There's a lot of yarn on here. There's a lot of projects. There's a lot of knitting needles here. So today I want to talk about cleaning up and organization and getting ready for the new year. So welcome back. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia Yarns and I come every Friday to talk about what I'm making, how I'm making time to make things and sort of my thought process around, you know, the different projects that I choose, the different projects that I'm working on, both personally and professionally for work. So it's December now, it's middle of December. Last weekend, we had our staff dinner for Sweet Georgia and it was really great fun. There was about 25 of us who were able to come out and uh, our staff is not 25 people, but it's 25 people, including spouses or girlfriends and boyfriends and things like that. And we were actually short three, uh, two of our dyers. They weren't able to come. So it would have been 28, but we ended up with 25, which is still a really, really, big group and it was fun and it was a relaxed evening and got to chat with people and that was all really great. I was saying to my husband that I remember years and years ago when it was just me and Teresa and a couple of girls and we went for all you can eat sushi. That's what we used to do for Christmas dinner and now it's just become a much bigger thing and it's just it's great to be able to see everybody and their families just before the holidays and things like that. And then also this past weekend we had my husband's company Christmas party. And that is a very intense, very intense Christmas tradition that they have for their company. Um, yeah, it's very intense. <laughs> and so for my husband's Christmas party, we were out till about two o'clock in the morning on the Saturday night or Sunday morning. And then I had to wake up a couple of hours later to then cook a turkey for, uh, 18 of our friends and their kids and everything. And so um, it's been kind of a crazy, busy December holiday time already. And we haven't even got too close to Christmas yet. So I hope that you guys are all enjoying your Decembers and that, you know, all the holidays are giving you lots and lots of time to spend with your family and friends and all of that stuff is really, really great. I am just looking forward at 2018. I've been for the past maybe three months been in this mode of looking at next year and what am I going to do next year? What are we going to do next year? And things like that. And one of the things that triggers this new year feeling is this feeling of needing to reorganize, reassess, figure out where you're at, clean things up, get organized. So January, when January hits, there's all these themes around, you know, setting new goals, getting organized, getting fit, getting cleaned, all of those kinds of things start popping up in January. But I kind of feel like January is when I want to be already done, when I want to be set, when I want to be organized and cleaned and tidy up, all this kind of stuff. I, I want to hit the ground running in January. I don't want to come to January and say, oh, how are we going to organize and clean up stuff now? So I've been in this mode of thinking about how am I going to get this whole attic area all organized with all the yarn and the needles and the fabric and things like that and trying to make decisions about you know what needs to stay out what needs to get sort of archived and things like that I'm looking at this window between Christmas and New Year's and there might be a little bit of a window of time in there where I might be able to do a little bit of tidying up in here so the kids can play around while I sort needles and things like that so let me kind of tell you what's on this table here. From the last couple of episodes, I've been talking about weaving this mohair blanket. And so I've still been winding all these balls of mohair. So we have more mohair. There's mohair everywhere. And what I have done to get started, like I keep thinking about what's the next step? What do I do to get this thing onto the loom? What's the next step? And the next step is, well, I was watching um, Jane Stafford's videos again, the online guild videos, and she talks about putting on a pseudo warp, which is like, it's a warp that you're not really going to weave, but it's a warp that you put on a loom and it serves as sort of the template that you will then tie your actual warp onto. And then you can reuse your pseudo warp. And the pseudo warp is basically put on the loom how you want to put all of your yarn on the loom. And so you put it at the right set and it's the right width on the loom and then you wind it on and everything is all set as if you were gonna weave that particular warp, but you don't weave that warp. 
You then cut the ends and then you cut the ends of your real warp and then you tie knots one one end of the real warp onto one end of the pseudo warp and you just tie knots all along the way and then you wind on the actual warp that you're gonna weave and then that just connects with the pseudo warp and it just all goes on to the loom like that and so the benefit of that is that when you're done weaving off that project you just cut it off and cut off a tiny little bit of that pseudo warp and then you can reuse that pseudo warp for the next project. So if your next project is also set up to be the same settings, the same width, the same number of ends, all that kind of stuff, it can make your life easier and it can make the process faster because you don't have to basically thread all of the heddles and everything. You don't have to do everything from scratch for every single project. You basically make one warp and then you set the template and then you can just keep making pieces. The other benefit of this is that if you have a very precious warp yarn, you don't have to lose any of that yarn in the in the sort of the, there's a there's loom waste, right? There's a there's a distance between the end of the loom and until you can reach the part where you can weave it. And so that amount of yarn sometimes is lost when you're weaving with it. So if you have a pseudo warp, then you can set up all of your yarns and then you'll weave to the very, very end of your warp, basically. So I have wound a warp which is going to be the pseudo warp and I use that 4-8 cotton yarn so just cotton strong not a lot of stretch to it so it should hopefully stay pretty stable and then if I put this on the spring loom the Louette spring loom then I could keep it on there theoretically and make a whole bunch of blankets I don't know if I want to make a whole bunch of blankets but then I looked at it the pseudo warp is 270 ends and it's going to be set at six ends per inch so 270 ends set at six ends per inch makes a 45 inch wide blanket so if I wanted to then say make a shawl that is 12 ends per inch then rather than ending up with 45 inches of fabric I would end up uh, with 22 and a half inches wide fabric and so that could make a nice shawl so I could theoretically use the same pseudo warp and then just re-slay it in the reed to make all of those ends pack a little bit tighter together and then I could reuse that same pseudo warp and use it to make a shawl or maybe I set it a little bit closer and I make dish towels or maybe I set it a little bit closer and then I make some kind of warp faced scarf or something like that so I thought well I don't really necessarily want to make you know a hundred blankets but maybe I could use this setup and it might help speed up my entire weaving process. So I'm going to give this a try. I'm looking forward to getting hopefully this put on the loom sometime over the Christmas holidays. So that's something that's been on this table. I have to get this off the table. The next things that are on this table are this is a nice little project bag that was given to me by one of the gals in our community. She's a, a, a longtime knitter and she's knit a couple of the samples for the book that I wrote and her name's Susie and she made this lovely project bag and gave it to me and I'm using this to hold my brioche hat that I started uh, a couple days ago and so I, I had said that the staff at Sweet Georgia they're working on hats as a knit along at the studio and they're calling it together together and um, Charlotte, like in the time that I said I was, I picked my project, I told Charlotte I picked my project and she said, you just picked your project? I've already knit six hats. So <laughs> I'm pretty slow compared to everybody else. But I'm working on this brioche hat because I wanted an opportunity to learn brioche. I think I've done a little bit before, maybe for a small project, but I don't remember doing those stitches. And so I cast on for this brioche hat and I ripped it out maybe two or three times already and I finally got it going and it's actually working now. <laughs> so similar to what I said in the previous episode about how it's really really important to read the instructions all the way through before you start a project because that will help you get to the end of your project and then you will avoid problems like having to rip things out and starting over and things like that. Well I didn't read all the way through my pattern and specifically I didn't read through the stitch glossary. I didn't read through how to form these brioche stitches because the way that the way that it's written is not exactly the way that you 
knit those stitches. Like if you just read the instructions and you try to follow them the way that they're written, it didn't work. And I tried to show Charlotte and I said, is this what brioche is supposed to look like? And she said, oh, you have to knit a couple of rows and then it's going to start to kind of appear. But I was actually doing it wrong. So I had to start off from the beginning and now it's actually working. So in maybe about a week or so, I'm going to do a little tutorial and I'll show you what the mistake was that I made and I'll show you how it actually works. So that's on here and I'm working on that and it's actually turning out pretty nice. Like you can see the that look, that corrugated ribbing kind of look where, you know, you're getting these stacked columns of one color and it's actually quite nice so far. And then the other thing that I have been knitting is the Advent Shawl. So the Advent Shawl, I've been knitting with these Chiagu needles and testing these out. So yeah, we can talk about needles now. I think I'm still like three or four days behind on the Advent Shawl, but that's okay. I don't really mind. And it's going really well and it's nice and easy and that's yeah, relaxing knitting. What else is on this table that needs to get cleaned up? This is examples from last episode. And these are the fixed length circular needles from Chiagu that I received last week that I have been knitting with and I actually quite enjoy them. Okay, so what else is on this desk? We have a lot of knitting needles. So I started knitting when I was in grade five or six. And so since that time, it's been a long time, I've collected knitting needles from wherever I could. I know like a lot of the knitting needles that I have were given to me by my mom or my mom's friends who were just stashing their stuff. And just over the decades of knitting, I have collected all sorts of different needles based on what my budget was at the time, what I was making at the time, what was available to me, which stores were closest to me, just all sorts of things that were, sometimes I feel like we're not necessarily in my control. You know, there's, there's tools that you want that are really wonderful and, but they are an investment. And so if you can't buy those things and you buy, you know, whatever happens to be available to you at the stores that are available to you. So I have lots and lots and lots of these bamboo needles from Clover. A lot of these yeah, a lot of these clover needles, bamboo needles, either in double pointed, on, in straights, in circulars. I have short circulars, long circulars, all in these bamboo materials because there was a wholesale distributor that was close to our old studio and I would go there on lunch break and mostly what they sold was either these clover bamboo needles or arrow metal needles. And so arrow metal needles, that's what I used to use when I was like in high school. So <laughs> I felt like I graduated away from those straight knitting needles towards other materials. And so I ended up buying a ton of these bamboo needles. Um, yeah, so I have so many. But then over the years, as you start to get maybe a little bit faster and you want to knit a little bit faster, then you hear about all of these very, very slick metal needles that are available. And so like Addies were very, very, very popular and I wanted to invest in a lot of Addy needles and so I did and then there was a whole situation with Addy needles having like a problem with the joins or how you had to like boil the knitting needles and the boil the circular knitting needles in hot water to soften the cable that was attaching the needles there's all sorts of issues about that I had a whole batch of knitting needles that went really really sticky they were I think the Addy lace tip needles that were the yellow colored and they all went a little bit grippy and sticky and I don't know what to do with any of those needles and then Addies are pretty expensive needles and so when Knit Picks came along then Knit Picks was also making nickel plated knitting needles and theirs were significantly less expensive and so then I started to invest in a lot of Knit Picks needles I have like a whole set of Knit Picks double pointed needles here that it's never ever actually ever been opened because I don't like to use double pointed needles, so I don't even know why I bought these. And then I thought in order to sort of curb the, you know, the proliferation of all these knitting needles, I thought, well, I'll go and buy interchangeable needles. So then I ended up buying the Knit Picks interchangeable needles, which were great, but they came in this packaging, which was 
kind of terrible because it had this elastic cord that would hold all of the little interchangeable tips in there. And you know, like the, this, this elastic cord kind of failed <laughs> and it started to get loose and all of these tips would basically fall out. And so now I have, yeah, just like a handful of random tips that are super annoying. And I could just probably get a case for all of these interchangeable tips, but it's just super, super annoying. And the other thing that I really don't like about interchangeable needles is that they unscrew themselves. And so, you know, you try to screw them on and I think, no, these ones don't have it, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, and so like these interchangeable needles, they just lost their other twist end to them. And so these ones are just kind of trashed now. And I know you can get replacement cords and all these kinds of things, but it's just more and more and more stuff and so much management involved. And so I think in order to sort of manage this, the proliferation of all these needle options that I have here, I was really looking at that Chiagu purchase from a couple weeks ago, looking at that as a way to maybe hopefully replace or simplify this entire situation because I don't want a giant pile of knitting needles that are broken or don't work or are sticky or just all these things. So I'm hoping that looking at these fixed length Chiagu um, red lace knitting needles that these might be the thing that I use from now on because you know the cord seems like it's very strong it seems very sturdy it doesn't get kinky um, I have not yet tried it for magic loop that's how I knit a lot of very small circular items so I'm gonna have to try that to see how that all works but I feel like it's actually been not too bad the join is pretty smooth the tips are very nice and smooth I like that they're very very pointy and sharp tips I like that about these needles um, the material is nice. It doesn't feel as slick or as smooth as the Addy needles, but they still feel quite nice. And then I have been using the uh, interchangeable set for the advent calendar project. And so the first day that I started using these, I noticed that they had some instructions in the interchangeable set saying that you need to use a T-pin to tighten these needles as you put the tips on them. And I didn't see a T-pin included in the set. So I was just like, whatever, I'll just screw them on and start knitting. And I did, and then within like half an hour, I started to notice that they were unscrewing themselves. So then I went and I got myself a safety pin and tightened it all. And now it's been completely and totally fine since then. So I think with these interchangeables, you really do need to use something as leverage to help tighten the join to make sure that the join is really really nice and smooth so that you're not getting these twisting off but so far these needles these interchangeables have been really really great so the thing that I like about this Chiagu set so far is that they have this case for all of the all of the tips so that they're not all going to fall out and you know have this kind of packaging and end up in a giant pile of unidentified tips. I like that they're all organized in this case that they have actual labels on the case uh, so you can see which tips go in which section. The other thing that's really really great is that the tips all have the actual sizes printed on the tips. They're a little bit hard to see but you can still see them and it's great because now they're identifiable. <laughs> Oh, ah, that's where the T-pins are. Okay, they're in the front pocket. And it comes with the needle gauge. That's very handy. And stitch markers. Nice. So I've not had a chance to open these interchangeables. These ones are the mini red lace mini interchangeables. I think same idea. There's a little 
pocket at the front here. There's nothing in there. Oh, look at these tiny, tiny, tiny cables. These are lovely. Why is it so hard to open this box? I have no idea how to open this box. Oh, there it goes. Okay, great. So these are the T pins for the mini interchangeable set because these ones are tiny, tiny, tiny needles. Okay, so when I knit socks, I use 2.25 millimeter. That is, it says here, size one. I should be able to do socks on this. Okay, so we're just screwing them in. So now we have to use a little T-pin to tighten the join. And aren't they smart? They provide this rubber to help grip the needle tip to give you more leverage as you tighten it. I think that's what it's for. So now I just have to find myself some sock yarn to try these out. So this setup seems lovely. I mean, these tiny little interchangeable knitting needles that are fine enough and thin enough to use for socks, these are fantastic. My issue <laughs> with sock needles is that I sometimes have more than one pair of socks on the go. And so I just end up ordering tons and tons of knit picks um, fixed length needles in like the 32 inch long length, 2.25 millimeters. And I have like tons of them all over the place. So I think I would like to be able to replace all this stuff here with some nice, clean, functioning, slick, pointy, interchangeable needles. I think that this would be a great solution to have. I think that the next step is really culling together, pulling together, finding all the knitting needles that are somewhere in the house in every random project, just collecting everything and putting them in one place. I'm gonna sort through all of them and figure out what I'm gonna keep, what can be donated, what can be given to friends or other people, new knitters, anybody who wants, especially, you know, elementary schools, girls who wanna start learning how to knit. Um, yeah, I received my first collection of you know, de-stashed yarns from my mom's friends when I was in high school and it had needles in it and had acrylic yarns in it and it had all sorts of stuff. And to me, it was just a treasure chest. It was so amazing to be able to receive all these materials to work with. And it wasn't like I was going to make any particular masterpiece out of it, but it was just all materials that I could then use to practice techniques and to learn. And so, I mean, you might not think very much of whatever leftover skeins of yarn you might have in your stash or old yarns or yarns that you just don't have any interest in using but it could be something that's really great to collect together and donate to somebody who might be learning you know somebody who might be just starting out so i think that i'm going to do that i'm going to go through all these needles like 10 millimeter bamboo takumi needles this was obviously for making a very chunky hat I don't know how many times I'm going to make a very chunky hat. I think that this could be a candidate for donation. <laughs> or here I have Crystal Palace Daisy 20 millimeter needles. These are really for fun. I have no idea why I have these or what they're for. Yeah. Oh. I found the broken end to that nit picks cable. It won't even allow me to remove the tip.
This is a two millimeter straight needle. This is super dangerous. We have very young kids in the house. This is kind of a dangerous thing to have lying around. A couple of years ago, I went to Vogue Knitting Live and Addie was the sponsor for the big dinner that they had. And they gave all of the participants of that dinner these knitting needles. These are humongous. I think they are, they are number 15s, US 15s, 10 millimeter knitting needles, circular needles, and they have Swarovski crystals inside them. They're lovely and they're fun, but I don't know. I'd have to go look for a project that would specifically use 10 millimeter needles, but I'm not going to throw these away. <laughs> they're nice. I found all those knitting needles that were kind of kinky. This is like kinky cord from one of those really old Addy needles. This is just really unfortunate. So this is the kind of thing that maybe perhaps if you put it in a pot of boiling water, it could soften this cord and it'll go back to being straight and normal. But the way it is now, it's just really, really hard to work with. So every time you're trying to knit a project, this cord is fighting you and it's got so much strength and so much spring to it. It's kind of fighting back and you're fighting the cord as you're trying to knit your project. It's really not that enjoyable. So I have a whole bunch of needles that are like this and I just need to figure out what to do with those. So yeah, I have hat needles, hat needles, hat needles, hat needles, needles for hats, more needles for hats. More hat needles, more hat needles. You would think that I have a lot of hand knitted hats, but I actually don't. More hat needles, oh, more hat needles. So I am going to clean up this table and clean up this mess, organize these needles, sort through stuff. And I would love to know how you guys organize your needles. Do you use interchangeable sets? Do you use fixed length needles? If you use fixed length needles, do you get like every different length for every different size or how, what is your knitting needle strategy? That's, I guess my question, what's your knitting needle strategy? How do you organize the tools that you need to get your knitting done? I'd love to hear about what your thoughts are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm having so much fun making these videos. I hope you guys really enjoy them as well. If you like this video, please hit like. And uh, if you'd like to see more things like this, please do hit subscribe and I will keep making more content. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one.